I'm hoping that I can get terrific protein expression by using terrific broth. TB is one of my favorite bacterial medias. Unlike LB, the lysogeny broth, that conventional broth we use, this guy has more nutrients so we can grow the cells to higher densities and it also has a pH buffer so it allows them to live longer even at those higher densities. And this can make it so that you have more and more bacteria living for longer, making more copies of your protein. And so this is great if you're limited on space um, or for other reasons. And so hopefully it works for me and here's more about why we use it, how we make it. There's some weird things like you have to add the phosphate buffer separately. So that's why I have this little check mark um, box so I can check it off afterwards. It also has a darker color than LB, but this isn't what may really makes a difference. That's just because it has more of that yeast stuff and tryptone, as well as that glycerol, which can kind of caramelize a little in the autoclave, but hopefully not too much. Okay, here are the details. When it comes to using bacteria to do things for us, like express proteins or make copies of plasmids, Lysogeny broth or LB, this is kind of like your main go-to, but there are other forms of bacterial media, so basically bacteria food, that can be better for different purposes, and one of my favorites is terrific broth or TB, which is really good for expressing proteins in a lot of cases. It's going to allow you to grow to a higher cell density, so have more cells there that can act as factories for making your protein. And it's also going to kind of allow the bacteria to live longer in these crowded environments without dying out. So let's look at what's in TB, what makes it so special, as well as how you can actually make it. So first off, let's compare it to LB. Um, so basically in LB, you have tryptone, which is basically a mix of peptides, so these short pieces of proteins that come from chopping up proteins. And so in the case of tryptone, what you get are like you have the chopping up of this casein protein, um, some like trypsin. Um, and so you get this these peptides that can act as a source of amino acids and nitrogen. You also have yeast extract. This is going to provide whatever was in the yeast. So vitamins, trace elements, et cetera. In the case of the TB, we're going to have the tryptone and we're going to have the yeast extract, but we're not going to have the sodium chloride. And instead of glucose, we're going to have glycerol as our source of sugar. And I should note too, that LB, it, not all the formulas actually have the glucose in it. So what, what do we see in TB? Well, in TB, we're going to actually have richer media. We're going to have more nutrients. We're going to have more of the tryptone and more of the yeast extracts. We're going to have more of those amino acids, more of our nitrogen, more of our other nutrients. And we're also going to add some new things. So we're going to have glycerol, which is going to provide a source of energy, this glycerol. And then we're going to have these phosphates that we're going to have this dipotassium phosphate and this monopotassium phosphate. And this is going to provide a pH buffer. And this is going to allow these bacteria to grow longer. If these bacteria are growing and they're eating those amino acids, they're actually gonna be generating a lot of waste products and excreting those into the media, um, secreting those into the media. And these are going to be like basic or alkaline waste products. And so they're gonna have the effect of raising the pH. Um, and the TB is going to have two things that can counteract it. One is it's going to have this phosphate buffering system that can kind of um, sop up some of that base. And it's also going to have that glycerol. And the glycerol is going to give it an alternative source of energy. So instead of just having to use those amino acids, it can start out by using that glycerol. And when it uses that glycerol, you're going to have less of that alkaline waste produced. And so you're going to get a delay in this, the alkalinization of the media. And so this is a kind of cool paper I showed, um, and I found on this bottom panel, what you're seeing is the pH over the days. If you look at our, um, at our open triangle, so this is our TV, sorry. Okay, so the open triangles, this is going to be the TB. If we remove the glycerol, what's going to happen is you get the solid triangles and so you can see that it's starting to alkalinize. So basically it gets to a higher pH earlier. If we look at LB in these open squares, what we see is that we have this early shift to a high alkalinization. And this is going to be, it kind of goes higher earlier than if you have the TB 
even the TB without the glycerol. So remember, glycerol is one thing that could help with the alkalinization, prevent delay the alkalinization. Um, but the other, so if but if you remove that, you get it quicker, but it's still not to the extent of the LB because it still has that pH buffer system in it. Now, if you add glycerol to LB, what actually happens is that you get this acidification. And this acidification is because, well, when you break down that glycerol, you can get some things like acetate, um, acetic acid, which is going to acidify your media. And it doesn't have that pH buffering system in order to maintain the stable pH. And so your kind of like golden area is this LB, um, it was this TB with the glycerol in it, where you're really delaying that alkalinization and you're not getting that acidification. You're also able to grow to a higher cell density, so this graph is kind of confusing. Um, but if you look to our TB, our normal TB, these are going to be the open triangles. And our normal LB, this is going to be the open squares. And you can see that we're at a higher um, cell density than with our LB. And we're also growing, basically, we have a delayed decrease, a delay before we start dying off. So we're longer in like this growth stage. So both of these are going to allow for our, our, the bacteria to grow at higher levels, longer times, um, less of the problems with the pH in the media, and therefore this can be better for protein expression. And in fact, um, if you look at this other paper, basically here they're showing you the cell biomass um, as well as the yield of their um, this enzyme that they're trying to purify. And so if you look at LB here and TB here, what you can see is that with TB, you're getting much more cells, um, as well as you're also getting more of the protein being made than in the case of the LB. And this can be especially good if you're at a small place where you only have a small little shaker incubator, and so you want to maximize how much protein you can make. Um, and so how do you actually make this terrific broth? There's some technical details. Um, one is that you're going to make it in two parts. So you're going to make a solution that contains this tryptone, this yeast extract, and this glycerol, and you're going to make a solution that contains this phosphate salts. You're going to autoclave these separately, so you put them in the steam sterilizer. You're going to do this separately, and then you're going to add them together. And so you might be wondering, okay, well, why do you do that? And well, because these phosphates, um, they have the effect that they can actually precipitate out some metals if you were to do it with this. So we don't see metal anywhere in here, but if you think about like minerals, those can be like metals. You have tr trace metals in the yeast extract that the, or in your tryptome. And what's gonna happen is that the phosphate group, it can kind of act as a chelator. So this is kind of like one of the warnings I had in my post about buffers, is that phosphate buffers, they can kind of act as chelators sometimes and kind of um, steal metals. And so if it steals a metal, it can actually precipitate out. This might seem kind of weird that this is going to happen at your high temperatures because normally you think about, okay, well, things are typically more soluble at a higher temperature, right? But what happens is that these, um, these salts that form are often exothermic. Um, it's this exothermic dissolution. So basically, when it dissolves, it gives off heat. So heat is kind of like our product. And so if we have more heat, we're going to be driving things towards precipitation. So you're more likely to precipitate at a higher heat in the case of these phosphates pulling out those metals. And depending on what metals and that sort of thing, you could predominantly be pulling out different forms of the phosphate. And so if you pull out more of this, um, the acid form where you pick, pull out more of the base form, this is going to affect your pH. And the pH is also going to affect solubility. So even when you go to a lower temperature, you might not be able to redissolve those solvents, um, redissolve those solids, those salts, those precipitates that have come out. And so instead you want to prevent them forming in the first place. And you can do this by autoclaving them separately and then mixing them together once they've cooled off. So what you want to do is you want to prepare a solution that contains the tryptone, the yeast extract, um, and your glycerol. Um, and then you want to prepare like a 10x solution of your phosphate salt. So something that's 10 times more concentrated than what you want to use it at. So you would add 100 microliters of that to 900 microliters in which you've dissolved the rest of the media, the rest of the components in order to get that one liter solution. So start out by weighing out those components. 
dissolving them in a little under 900 milliliters to start with, because remember that solids take up space. So go ahead and weigh them out, um, estimate to about 800 mils or so. Um, and then go ahead and pour it into your graduated cylinder and adjust that volume to 900 mils. And this should be your nice super pure water coming out of a milli cube or something like that. You're also going to want to prepare your phosphate solutions. Because this is a 10x solution, if you make a liter of it, that's going to be enough for 10 liters. And so you're not gonna have to make it every time that you make the TB. You can just keep it, a bottle of it, and then mix it to the rest, when you make the rest of the components each time. So you're gonna go ahead and make each of these, allow it to cool to at least less than 60 degrees Celsius. Um, you can, if you're doing this like the next day or whatever, that's totally fine. Just you wanna make sure it's not too hot still. So it has to be at least less than 60 and then you're going to mix them together. When you're doing this, you need to remember to maintain those sterile conditions. So have your um, flame going and mix them together. Um, and this will give you your TV media. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do your experiment. So you can go ahead and you can monitor induce expression. You can um, monitor the growth of it using the OD. You can induce expression. You can get it to make your protein. Um, when you're doing this OD monitoring, you're monitoring the bacterial growth. Well, here you're actually going to want to go to a higher amount than when you go to when you're doing your LB, because remember that we're going to allow it to grow to a higher density. So the higher the density of the bacterial cells, the less light can make it through when you shine light at them, the more of it gets scattered. So you're going to have a higher OD, um, OD600. And you can measure this with like a little cuvette monitor or something like this. Um, and so when you want to induce it, so get it to make proteins, you can add IPDG. For LB, I typically do about um, 0 0.6 to 0.8, but for TB, I let it grow to about 1.4 to 1.8. So I let it get more cells there um, before I actually get it to make protein because they've got that glycerol, they've got those phosphate salts, they can survive even at those higher densities. And hopefully now they also have those more nutrients so they can make more and more of our protein. And so hopefully you'll get a good expression when you use TB, but you might not. And sometimes it's bad to have like too much of the protein be made uh, because then it can like go into inclusion body. So basically insoluble gunks of it um, and things like this. So you might want to test both LB and TB before just trying out the TB. But TB has often worked for me. And so hopefully it'll work for you too.